In a right triangle like this, we know that a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. However, have you ever wondered which one would be greater? a to the 2.5 plus b to the 2.5 or c to the 2.5? Which one of these two quantities would be greater? And if we had an exponent of 100 instead of 2.5, then which one would be greater? Well, in this video, we're actually going to answer that question. More generally, we're actually going to answer which one is greater, a to the r plus b to the r or c to the r for r greater than 2. And note that r can be any real number greater than 2. So we're going to answer this question. Now, before we get into it, I do want to say that this video is inspired by Black Pen Red Pen. He's a phenomenal math YouTuber. He helps many small channels grow by promoting them, including me. <laughs> and also, he made a video that was basically the fuel for this video right now. Essentially, in that video, he compared the values of a cubed plus b cubed and c cubed. So basically, the case when r is equal to 3. That's a super cool idea. I thought it was super interesting. And basically, I'm going to generalize that result in this video. But still, that was such a cool initial idea that I just got so hooked up with it. <laughs> so you should definitely go check him out. Definitely go check out the video that he made, right? He doesn't need me to promote his videos, but you get the point. That video was super cool. You should check it out. <laughs> Anyways, as I said, he found, the, he found the result for when r is equal to 3, and it turns out that a cubed plus b cubed is always smaller or equal to c cubed. And if you use a similar strategy that he used to prove this, you can also show that a to the 4 plus b to the 4 is always smaller or equal to c to the 4. Now, these two results might make us conjecture that a to the n plus b to the n is always smaller or equal to c to the n for n for n greater than 2, right? <laughs> now, I know that it might, it might be tempting just to say, oh, for all n being a real number greater than 2. However, right now, we only have data for positive integers. So it's best to first make a conjecture for positive integers only, and then we can maybe build up to real numbers. So right now, we're just going to consider the cases when n is a positive integer greater than 2. So will this be true under this condition? Well, when we have a result to prove that involves a positive, a positive integer value changing, then it's best to try induction. In this case, we have two base cases. <laughs> we have a base case for when, for when n is equal to 3 and n is equal to 4. And you might be confused as to why we have two base cases. It will become relevant in a moment. Now, suppose that this inequality holds for n is equal to k. What about the value n is equal to k plus 2? Now, you might be wondering, why k plus 2? Why not just k plus 1? <laughs> well, this is actually going to be easier to prove by induction. And as a hint, take a look at Pythagorean theorem. It has squared terms, right? That's just a bit of a hint as to why this is easier to prove. And as a general tip, when you're performing induction, you don't always have to consider the immediately next term. You can consider some term with a jump, right? You can you know, jump ahead a little bit and it can still work very nicely. <laughs> okay, so this over here is what we're going to consider. How do we show that for n equals to k plus 2, this thing will also hold? Well, we know that a and b are smaller than c because c is the hypotenuse. So we know that a to the k will be smaller than c to the k, and b to the k will be smaller than c to the k, right? Now, for this one, consider multiplying both sides by a squared. And for this one, consider multiplying both sides by b squared. And notice that this side, we have a to the k plus 2, right? Because the exponents add. And on this side, over here, we have b to the k plus 2. Now, would you look at this? If we were to add these two inequalities, and we can add because both of these are smaller than you know, these two values, so this plus this, a to the k plus 2 plus b to the k plus 2, we know that this will be for sure smaller than c to the k 
And then let's factor out the c to the k while we're at it. This will be a squared plus b squared, right? But what is a squared plus b squared? It's c squared. <laughs> so this over here is c to the k times c squared, right? And of course, this is c to the k plus 2. And there we have it. We have proved that a to the k plus 2 plus b to the k plus 2 will indeed be smaller than c to the k plus 2. And that is our proof. And the reason we had two base cases is notice that if we were to start with the base case of 3, then inducting onwards, well, plus 2, you're going to induct through all the odd integers, right? And over here, you're inducting through all the even integers. So we're done our, we're done our proof by induction. We know that this holds for all n greater than 2 and n being a positive integer. Okay, so I've written our result on the board. This inequality will hold for all positive integers n greater than 2. But how can we extend that to all real numbers greater than 2? <laughs> well, I, I guess it's hard because real numbers aren't as easy to manipulate as positive integers. They're not discrete, it's continuous. However, when you see a hard problem, it's usually a good idea to step back down to the easier version. In this case, the positive integer case was much easier in this case. So how can you reframe this problem in a way that positive integers will, will be much more relevant? Well, consider this. If you take a real number like 2.36, then notice that you can always write a real number as an integer part plus its fractional part, right? In this case, 2 plus 0 0.36. And while this might seem obvious, this is a really good insight because it allows you to separate the real number into a, a workable integer piece and the messier fractional piece, right? So we can actually make the following substitution. We can let r equals to the floor of r, which is its integer piece, plus its fractional piece. And to make it more rigorous, the floor of r is defined as the greatest integer less than, less than or equal to r, and the fractional piece is just r minus the floor of r, right? So those are the two definitions. Okay, so now we can consider just working with the floor of r because it's an integer and we know a result for this inequality when n is an integer. Specifically, we know that floor of r is going to be greater than 2, and from this result, we therefore know that a to the floor of r plus b to the floor of r is going to be is going to be smaller or equal to c to the floor of r, right? And this inequality itself already looks like a very good stepping stone in order to convert this exponent into the actual r, right? Hmm, how do we do that though? It's a pretty good start, but where do we go from here? Okay, the next step will involve a bit of wishful thinking, but not too much. It's basically the same idea as what we did to do the induction for this case. Of course, this is not induction, but the idea to get the proofs running is going to be the same. So consider this. Again, notice that a and b are smaller than c, right? So therefore, a to the fractional piece of r is going to be smaller than c to the fractional piece of r and b to the fractional piece of r is going to be smaller than c to the fractional piece of r, right? Okay, well that's all well and good. <laughs> How do we use this? Well, it'd be really nice if we can make this exponent on a r, not just fractional piece of r. And to do that, we can multiply both sides by a to the floor of r, right? And of course we must do it to both sides. And we can do this because, you know, a to the floor of r is going to be positive, obviously. And similarly, over here, we can make this b to the floor of r, right? We can, what am I doing? <laughs> b to the floor of r times, you know, b to the fractional piece. They, they add, the exponents add, you get b to the r, right? And of course, on the other side, the same thing. Now, this part becomes a to the r, right? So that's a to the r is smaller than c to the fractional piece of r times a to the floor of r. And this over here is b to the r is smaller than c to the fractional piece of r times b times b to the floor of r. Oh, that's a lot to say. So now we have two inequalities. And if we were to add them up, which might seem like wishful thinking, but if you 
are looking like one or two steps ahead, you will see where we're going. So if you were to add these inequalities up, we get a to the r plus b to the r is smaller than, over here you get c to the fractional piece of r times a to the floor of r plus b to the floor of r. Now, this is absolutely magical. Why? Well, because we know that a to the floor of r plus b to the floor of r, which we have over here, this is smaller or equal to c to the floor of r. So basically, this entire expression over here is smaller or equal to c to the fractional piece of r times c to the floor of r. And what is this equal to? c to the r. And there we have it. a to the r plus b to the r is smaller than c to the r. Finally, that is the result. Our result is that a to the r plus b to the r is going to be smaller or equal to c to the r for r greater than 2. And there we have it. This is the relationship between these two, these two quantities. I think this is super, super cool. Um, once again, I would like to thank Black Pen Red Pen for his initial video. That was a very cool video and it was really satisfying to generalize it. And as problem solving tips, as we said earlier, when you're doing induction, you don't always have to consider the immediately next term. You can maybe consider uh, the next two terms, the next three terms, right? And in that case, you can still do a very effective induction and also try to break a problem down into easier parts. In this case, we literally broke a number down into easier parts. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it interesting. If you did, then please do consider dropping a like and subscribing. Thank you very much. Bye.